Now we simulate a short circuit downstream of a circuit breaker. To be precise, a short circuit as it usually occurs in practice. This is not a full short circuit, but a short circuit with contact and line resistances. The third branch is short circuited by this shorting link. As you can see, the miniature circuit breaker does not trip immediately. The voltage has dropped and the PLC has gone to stop. The whole system has come to a standstill. Let's have a look at the faceplate of the PSU 6200. The glitch under voltage counter indicates 1. This means the user can see where the PLC has crashed. The voltage drop was registered by the CTOP PSU 6200 and transmitted to the PLC after restarting. Because this all happened very quickly, let's simulate the short circuit again and take a look at the diagnostics monitor of the PSU 6200. Four yellow LEDs indicate a load of more than 90% due to the high overload. The 10 amp power supply unit does not maintain the voltage for long and the PLC goes into stop. Why did the miniature circuit breaker not trip in time? For fast electromagnetic tripping in the millisecond range, miniature circuit breakers require approximately 15 times the nominal value for direct current. That is 30 amp for this 2 amp circuit breaker. Because the 30 amp do not start flowing due to line and contact resistances, only the slower thermal release of the bimetal in the miniature circuit breaker responds. Now we will also simulate a short circuit on the cell 1200. The third output reacts immediately and switches off. The output voltage of the power supply remains stable and the PLC and the panel continue to run. The faceplate shows the reason for the shutdown. The output current was at least 1.5 times higher than the set current. So the user knows that a very large overload is involved. The selectivity module protects the load and the cable reliably in any case, even if, for example, long cables or contact resistances limit the short circuit current. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.